Hello everybody, this is Kelly Stamps, and I am a frugal hermit with expensive energy. I love being inside in my home, avoiding everybody and everything while saving money. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's Maybelline. Either way, I am pleased to share with you my bougie, simple, financially minimalist lifestyle. This is how I avoid humanity and save my money working towards early retirement. And later in this video, I will discuss how I have been dipping my toe into the world of investing using Robinhood. Hey Robinhood, they are sponsoring this video. No one had the finance talk, or any talk for that matter. I learned everything the hard way. I am your parent. I am your YouTube mother and professor. And I will not let the Stampede students go out into this cruel world without understanding finance, minimalism, how to truly live your life for you and no one else. And it starts with saving money. So this is my routine as an isolated meme. I wake up every day without an alarm around 6 a.m. Just like that. It's usually pretty dark out still. I open my windows and I look outside and I thank God for giving me another day on this planet to be a meme. And then I pop up. I walk towards my closet and I put my favorite leg prisons on. Leg prisons, otherwise known as pants. I hate wearing clothes. Although these pants are very comfy. They're actually, you know, tight on the waist and they're loose on bottom. So let's not call them leg prisons. These are leg jails, temporary discomfort. Anyway, I make sure that I'm not naked and I go out for my morning walk. I make sure of one thing. I leave my phone at home and I bring my flip phone. I will discuss this in a different video. I am trying to go back to a very simple life, hence the title of this video. iPhones cost over a thousand dollars these days. I just want something to call 911 with in case of emergency. Like, hello, yes, yes, Italy ran out of tiramisu. I absolutely abhor having a smartphone. Why? Because it's expensive, which goes against my minimalistic lifestyle, and there are just too many distractions. You know, you pop open Instagram, next thing you know, you're scrolling for one minute, then it becomes one hour, and then two hours pass, and then you're, you turn 30, then you have a gray hair, and then your kids are asking, what happened in 2020? Don't get me started. We'll talk about digital minimalism in another video. I will let you know if I actually last having a flip phone or not. But hey, I leave my phone at home and I go on my walk. Also, I think the reason why I was overspending in the past is because of Instagram. Sorry, Instagram, I love y'all. It's just people on there have such cute outfits. It's just so tempting to buy what they're wearing. And then I look at myself and I say, ha, they can't get me because I have on my day-to-day -day leg prisons. These are my favorites. They are very expensive and they will last me forever. That is all that I need. I digress. So I'm on my walk. You know, it's dark out. I say hello to the other freaks who are out and about at this time of day, which is no one except for some possums. Then at some point, I make my way down to the Thinking Cup, which is my favorite coffee shop where I get my free coffee. Free coffee? I know you just jumped up and responded like Tyrone Biggums from The Chappelle Show. Free coffee? Well, I'll tell you how I got my free coffee. Do you like puzzles? I like puzzles. Let me give you a puzzle. The owner of The Thinking Cup is a man named Hugh Geiger. Geiger? Geiger? Crystal Geyser. Yes. He also owns a coffee shop called The Thinking Cup. The Thinking Cup employs someone named Tyg, otherwise known as Tag Wyman who was a real estate agent in my previous video, Luxury Apartment Hunt in Boston. I found my apartment through Tag, and then I promoted them, just because I wanted to, on a video, and then they got multiple clients, and then he closed the deal because of me. In conclusion, I'm the President of the United States. I help you, you help me. Their company hand-delivered the sweetest card to me saying, hello, Kelly Stamps. You're so beautiful, iconic, oh my gosh, 
you look like Zoe Saldana if I had a couple of shots and turned my head sideways. Actually, they didn't say that, but they did say, Kelly, we really appreciate you shouting us out in your video. It was so kind. Here are two gift cards to go to the Thinking Cup since it's your new favorite spot. They're not paying me to say this, by the way. I just love that coffee shop. And it ties into this video because minimalism is about not spending money or spending the least amount possible. And I earned my free coffee and croissants every single day. <sighs> but the sad thing is I can't live on croissants and coffee. You know, I actually do eat real food, believe it or not. I know, it's shocking. So I end up going to the local farmer's market. This is where I get all of my very, very, very cheap fruits and vegetables and more. So I have sort of a money saving grocery shopping strategy that helps me keep my costs of living low. I usually get like two bunches of bananas. There's 11 bananas total for, wait, let me find my receipt here. I screenshot my receipts and I save everything onto my computer, which is really weird, I know. Two bunches of bananas for $2. I got a container of strawberries for $3 and two bunches of asparagus for $1. But all I really need is just vegetables, fruit, water, tiramisu, and pasta to survive. So that's what I've limited my grocery shopping diet to, I guess. So for the other parts, I go to Italy, I get pasta, it comes in a bag, I get the highest quality bagged pasta I can. And then I just stock them up in my cabinets here. And then I go get their pre-made sauces. So I have an addiction to eating out. Not anymore because I've gotten over it. And I'll tell you how. And I think we can all relate to this one. So listen up. You need to learn how to somehow make the dishes that they make in restaurants within reason. Because when I was first trying to be a minimalist, I thought I'm gonna go to my local market. I'm gonna go to you know Ralph's in California. I'm just gonna get like, bread, slices of turkey, water, and assume that I can actually be happy with that. I wasn't. I actually bought tons of you know, clean, healthy, plain groceries, and I ended up eating out all the time because I wasn't happy with what I actually got. But now I figured out a way to kind of meet in between. So also something that I did is I go and get like very high quality pork chops from Italy, like pork loins, and then I take them home I slice the meat up and I portion it off into different bags here. This is the pork loin for, let's say, Thursday or Friday. So what I'm gonna do is, throughout the week, take it out the day before I need to cook it, cook it, serve it with some, you know, whatever, mashed potatoes and the dollar asparagus. So after my usual morning routine of waking up, going on a walk without my phone, taking the flip phone, which by the way, people laugh at me for, I'm pretty sure they're giggling when they see me using it. They're just jealous because they can't listen to ringtones. I go home and I work towards my plan for world domination. I've said this many times at the beginning of my channel. Some people thought I was kidding. I wasn't. But you know what? I had this breakthrough lately, which I will discuss in another video, which is that YouTube is the greatest thing ever, of course. I'm having a blast making videos, putting it out there on the internet for millions and flagellions of people across the world to see. However, it's changed for me. The simple life that I created has now become less simple because once it's a business, it's not fun anymore. So I've actually made the decision to change that somehow. I want YouTube to go back to being just my hobby. And while I'm fun, I'm happy right now, but there have been serious dips in my emotions because of it. So I'm hitting the drawing board and thinking, what is next for me in my 20s? I love youtube.com, but it may not last forever. I'm gonna ride the gravy train until I can. And what would be smart is treating this as a hobby again and possibly going back to working again soon and just taking the money from YouTube and investing that. I feel so blessed to be able to make a living. This apartment that I live in is paid for because I use my personality to project knowledge on this little laptop, okay? I always talk about start a channel, start a channel, because it is the best way to get a fast track on financial freedom. However, the best piece of advice that I've received from a nice lady shopping in Muji was that <clears throat> who you are with $10 is who you are with $10 million. I was meshy. When I got my first paycheck, I did not know how to act. 
and more importantly, it did not know who to ask for help. It is so important to have these discussions with each other as soon as we can. Fun fact, only two in five people know who to ask for investing advice. That's not good, especially during this time. You know, the world is in chaos right now. Our mental health is wavering. We can't control a lot of what's going on around us, but we can get a grip on our financial health. That is just as important as mental health. So I have the controlling, quantitative, uh, like teacher, are you sure you didn't collect the homework? Do you need to collect it? Type of personality. What helped me get a grip on things is setting a financial plan for myself. Just getting out a pen and paper and writing out something simple. For example, right now, I'm only limiting myself to eating my groceries and one tiramisu per month. Very simple, right? And I also said, you know what, this year I'm gonna start investing. But it was so scary because no one's ever talked to me about this but I dug deep, I did all my research, and you know what the cool thing is? Robinhood can actually help break down those fear barriers that we have. Whew, I was scared of making a financial plan when I had a normal job before YouTube because I was thinking, oh, no, I can't invest, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. I don't have enough what, exactly? See, I was so deep in this scarcity mindset. Now I realize, wait, you can start investing on Robinhood using $1. Yes, you can actually start investing in stocks in Robinhood using just $1. It goes to show that, similar to starting a channel on YouTube, it's not about starting with the biggest, baddest, expensive equipment. It's about starting small and making your money work for you over time. Robinhood is great for beginners, great for Stampede members because they already make investing simple, but they make it even simpler using something called Robinhood Learn. It's a beginner's guide that makes Robinhood's already user-friendly, you know, design interface even easier to understand. But that's not all. Please fix your posture, Stampede students. I see you're slouching in the back. I encourage you to tackle your fear, jump in, and start investing like I have. Well, I don't know about you, but I love the taste of financial independence. Thank you, class, for coming to Stampede University Finance 101. I hope you learned something. If not, I hope I put the fear of God into you with my spatula. Goodbye. Yes, yes, Michael Fassbender. Okay, I'm heading to dinner. Sorry, my video is just taking a while. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm doing the Lord's work. Okay, goodbye.